Have you recently had a blood test and found that your iron saturation levels are elevated? Maybe you're worried that you have hemochromatosis or some sort of iron overload condition. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to break down in a little bit more detail high iron saturation levels and some of the other things outside of iron overload that could be impacting your iron saturation levels. As I said, my name is Dr. Taranella, and I make these videos to help you go beyond basic health. They're not made for any specific individual, so please read this video disclaimer before we jump into the video details. So in this video, we're going to take a little bit deeper dive into high iron saturation levels. So in a previous video, we discussed high iron saturation in the context of iron overload and things like that. What was noted there too is that when iron saturation goes up, it does so because there's less transferrin molecule to bind up any circulating iron throughout your body. So when your iron levels in your body go up, the transferrin molecule is bound to it, and this leaves the overall saturation of that iron much higher. So the two main variables here being the iron level and particularly the iron coming into the body and then also the amount of transferrin molecule that's in the body as well. The transferrin molecule does carry the iron, but it has more or less a fixed quantity. So as the iron level goes up, the saturation of that transferrin molecule goes up as well. There are a few reasons this will happen, and we'll discuss those here as well. But just as a way of an analogy, you can think of it like cabs picking up people and taking them to their destination. There's a fixed number of cabs, and only so many people or iron molecules can fit into one cab. As more people arrive and need rides to their destination, the number of cabs with passengers goes up. And this is our iron saturation or saturation of the cab, which is analogous to the transferrin molecule. So essentially what it comes down to is the number of iron molecules that are rising that need to be transported. And there are several things that can affect this. So the first big one that may go overlooked a lot is diet. But as you consume food, the food obviously contains iron in it to a lesser or more amount. And so there's more passengers that need a ride. The closer you have food to the blood draw, the more likely you're going to have a higher level of iron saturation when you take that blood draw. In addition, the more iron in that food, so let's say you have oatmeal, well, there's not a whole lot of iron in that, but if you have a steak, the night before or right leading up to the blood draw, you're more likely to have a higher iron level and a higher iron saturation. Animal-based iron is more easily absorbed into the body, and so eating a diet that's high in iron, like lots of red meats or carnivore types of diets, these are easily going to raise the iron saturation, but not for the long term, more so for the short term. Think maybe eight hours, potentially 24 hours. Consuming iron in the form of a supplement, like a multivitamin that might have iron, or if you're actually taking iron supplements, that's also going to raise it. Many people these days are taking liver tablets to help support various things in their body. That's definitely going to have iron in it as well. In addition, taking things like vitamin C on a regular basis can also raise your iron absorption or increase the amount of passengers that are needing to be transported. And you can think of this like a fast track or an express track for the cab service. The vitamin C does this mostly by turning plant-based iron into the more absorbable form. Other things to think about is like the total iron circulating throughout your body or the total iron reserves. Those types of things can also make things better or worse. So like, for instance, if you're menstruating or you have some kind of bleeding problem or recent surgery, your saturation may go down. Ultimately, though, what people want to know and understand oftentimes with iron saturation is either am I absorbing enough or on the other hand, which is maybe more concerning, is do I have some kind of iron overload situation going on or is it simply a spike from a recent meal or iron supplement? The ferritin test is a good sign or indicator that can give you some clues about this. But as noted in previous videos, ferritin can go up and down based on various things as well. And ferritin levels may not go up in the earlier stages of iron overload like hemochromatosis. But ferritin can also go up for other reasons like inflammation or infections. So if you end up with a high iron saturation, it's best that you first retest in a fasted state. Retest when you know you haven't been consuming 
any large amounts of iron or excess iron in the way for diet or vitamin C. And if the saturation remains on the high end or it's actually high, then you can be more convinced that you actually have an issue here. If it goes down in a significant way, then you can be more reassured that it's just related to something that you're consuming or some other factor that maybe you don't even have to worry about. Iron overload can be a very serious condition, so if you do have a high test, it's best that you recheck it, not just once, maybe several times before you're sure that it's really not a problem. Another thing you can keep track of is the actual transferrin level and the TIBC, known as total iron binding capacity. In someone with true hemochromatosis or moderate to more advanced stages of hemochromatosis, you're going to have a low or low normal total iron binding capacity. Someone with a transient spike in transferrin saturation or iron saturation, it's going to be high or normal or high normal. And that's just reflecting them the fact that this hasn't been going on for a long time. So there actually is a lot of slack in the line, a lot of capacity there, just a transient spike in the saturation. All right, so hopefully that gives you a better understanding of high iron saturation levels. If you do have any questions about this topic, drop it in the comment section. I'm happy to answer your questions. If you have a very specific question and want me to spend more time and attention on that question, consider joining the membership program where I'll have more time and attention to dedicate to your questions. Either way, I'll try and answer your questions. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.